Hot FM. News. Clear, concise and informative. Thank you for joining us on the news machine, the hottest news magazine show on radio. We are reaching you from Hot FM stations in Lagos on 93.3 FM, Hot FM Abuja 98.3 FM, and Hot FM Oweri 99.5 FM, 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m., Monday to Friday. I am Otobon Nkanta. This morning on the news machine, court stops prosecution of suspended Adamawa REC. Showere blast Tinubu over fuel subsidy removal. Nigeria Immigration Service promises speedy processing of passports for Abuja residents and tax force clears traders of Oshodi rail tracks other areas. We will also be linking up for the voices in the news. The news machine will be back after these message. Now you can get your news on. Hot, fresh, exciting and exclusive. The News Machine. Reaching you at the same time in Lagos, Abuja and Nwari. Three state for the price of one. Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. The News Machine. More than just news. Hot FM. We are more than just radio. Welcome back to the News Machine. A federal high court, Abuja, has stopped the Independent National Electoral Commission from prosecuting the suspended Adamawa resident electoral commissioner, Hudu Yunusa Ari, over his declaration of Aisha Dahiru, the All Progressives Congress candidate, as governor of the March 18 poll. Justice Donatu Zokorowo met the other after Mr. Michael Andoka, signed counsel to Dahiru, moved the ex parte motion to the effect. Aundoka, while moving the motion, argued that until the election petition tribunal decides the fate of his client in accordance with Section 149 of the Electoral Act 2022, the prosecution of Yunusa Ari cannot be said to be valid. He said the decision of INEC to file an action against any person involved in Dahiru's April 15 declaration as winner of the supplementary poll in the state when the tribunal was yet to determine the petition of his client would deprive her of the law which gives 180 days within which the petition filed on May 6 should be dispensed with. After listening to Andoka, Justice Okorowo ordered the parties to maintain the status quo pending the hearing and determination of the matter. The presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Omoyole Shorore, has claimed that President Bolatinubu will face a national resistance over what he described as thoughtless petrol subsidy policy. While speaking to a group of his party supporters, Shorore alleged that Tinubu was driven by impunity when he bragged that he would remove subsidy whether people protested or not. The statement followed the confusion and controversy that have surrounded the recently announced fuel subsidy removal by the president. They are all lying that subsidy is not good for the Nigerian economy. Each time they remove subsidy, the Nigerian economy enters into a recession. Do you know why? 80% of the Nigerian economic system is run by you and me, the informal sector. The moment there's a dislocation that destroys our ability to run our small, small businesses, it, millions of people lose jobs. There's something new about those who are importing fuel. They are importing substandard fuel into the country that is burnt faster than the normal fuel. That is what they want to do. And I'm sure, apart from the fact that it evaporates faster, it's also destroying your engine. So you're automatically going to enter into a recession. Shore also claimed that the president had forgotten many of the recent struggles were rooted in revolt across the country, especially his control over Lagos. The Lagos State Tax Force has cleared traders of the Osho rail tracks on the Apongbong Bridge and other areas in the state. Mr. Badeyan Abdul Rahim, spokesman Lagos State Tax Force, said the chairman of the agency, CSP Shola Jejeloye, led the enforcement on Monday. Abdul Ramin said the exercise was to read the state of indiscriminate display of goods on the highways, roadsides, cabs, and railway tracks across various parts of the metropolis. He said that the trading activities not only debase the environment but also cause pain and discomfort to Lagos residents. River State Governor Semina Lai Fubara has signed the supplementary budget of 200 billion naira recently passed by the River State House of Assembly. 
He stated that his administration is poised to begin construction work on the proposed Port Harcourt Ring Road and that the project will connect communities across several local government areas. He spoke after signing the appropriation law presented to him by the leader of the House, Edison Ehi. A supplementary budget to aid our administration agenda. We are a product of consolidation and continuity. And uh, when you understand where we're coming from, every promise, every good idea initiated by the immediate past administration is our duty to see that they see the daylight. Not just seeing the daylight like what you see along the UTC road, but see the daylight in what will benefit and improve the life of the good people of River State. In his remarks, Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Martin Amewile said the legislature will continue to offer the required support to achieve success. Your assent to the 2023 supplementary appropriation law today clearly demonstrates your commitment to fulfilling your promises to our people during the election hearing campaigns. We are even amazed that upon your assent this evening, you have also announced that in the coming days, you are going to proceed with uh, processes that will culminate in the actualization of the Potakot Ring, uh, Ring Road project, which we have just approved the sum of 200 billion for. Excellency, we are so delighted to have you as our, as our governor, so far so good. We are following and asking our constituents and the feelers, what we are getting from them clearly demonstrate that with what we are doing, we will definitely be able to tell them that we did not make any mistake whatsoever in what, uh, whatever decisions we've taken in the past. Governor Fubara announced that he will soon sign the contract papers and eventually flag off the 50.15 kilometers Port Harcourt Ring Road as a legacy project, assuring that his administration will continue to do the right thing within the new reverse vision. Now it's time to get the trendy stories from the news machine studios at Hot FM 98.3 Abuja. Let's hook up with more news coming from the nation's capital. Good morning. Here's the news from Abuja. Niger State Governor Honorable Mohamed Umar Bago has directed the dissolution of all statutory commissions, boards and parastatals and the termination of all political appointees appointed before May 29, 2023. A statement issued by Secretary to the State Government Abu Bakar Usman disclosed that Governor Umar Bago ordered the dissolution and termination of appointments with immediate effect. He further explained that commissions, boards and parastatals that are tenured or not tenured are also affected by the dissolution and urged concerned officials to comply immediately with the directive. While recognizing their positive contributions to the development of the state and the affairs of their office, the SSG directed those affected by the dissolution to hand over all government properties, including official vehicles, in their possession to the most senior director in their respective organizations. Nigeria Immigration Service, FCT Command, has promised to overcome challenges facing processing and issuance of passport to applicants in the federal capital territory. In an interview with Hot FM in Abuja, controller Nigeria Immigration Immigration Service FCT Command Anthony Akuneme described Abuja, Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Benin as the epicenter of delay in processing and issuance of passport as a result of overcrowding. Akuneme stated that his major priority is to acquire an office annex in the city center to support the FCT command situated in Gwagwalada Area Council to eliminate overcrowding being experienced in Abuja. Immediate challenges that I'm going to address to make sure that the, the FCT command as much as possible gets a place to look in the city center so that the people who seek our services, whether they are Nigerians seeking for passports or they are expatriates seeking for work permits or extension of visas or even Africans or West Africans who need uh, their registration or the mig migrant registration, we can create a sub-office in the city center so that everybody don't have to go all the way to Guagualada to assess our services. He explained that his command will carry out adequate sensitization workshop for all stakeholders to enhance service delivery by the service to the citizens in the FCT. We are 
going to engage with the, the immigration stakeholders. And stakeholders include even the Nigerians and the foreigners. We will organize a stakeholders summit or conference where everybody will come and tell us what they expect from us. This time is going to be bottom-up approach. Let's hear what is their challenge. Because all the companies in Abuja that have foreigners, maybe they have challenges. Maybe nobody has asked. So this is no longer the time of just asking them for their paper, their paper, their paper. Now let them come and ask us for our paper or what we can offer to them to make their job better so that they can create more employment for people in the so that people can be happier. The new controller FCT Command, Anthony Akuneme, on assumption of office, paid an official visit to the permanent secretary FCT administration, Olusha De Adeshola, to commence the process of getting an office annex in the city center. And that's all from the News Machine Studio at Hot FM Abuja. I'm Kevin Joseph La. Over to Lagos. All right, let's link up with the News Machine Studios at Hot FM 99.5 Oweri. For the trending news happening in the southeastern part of the country. Good morning and welcome to our studios in Oweri. Imo State Governor Hope Uzodimma has redeemed his pledge of 30 million naira to six Super Falcons players who participated at the 2022 Africa Women Championship in Morocco who are from the state. This was contained in a statement signed by the governor's chief press secretary, Oguike Nwachuku, in Oweri. Uzodima had pledged 5 million naira for each of the players when they paid him a kotsi call at the government house, Oweri. The players are Desire Okparanose, goalkeeper Chiamaka Nadoze, Vivian Ikechuku, goalkeeper Tochuku Oluehi, Ohale Osinachi, and US born Michelle Alozie. Uzodima said that he was particularly touched by the display of football artistry exhibited by the women folk against their Moroccan competitors. Anambra State Governor Chikuma Soludo has issued the directive regarding Mesoma Joy Ejikeme, the student who admitted to fabricating her unified tertiary matriculation examination results. Ejikeme claimed to have scored 362 as against the 249 mark the Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board, JAMB, recorded as her tally. Saludo directed that Ejike may be referred to the State Gardens Counselor for additional guidance and therapy in a letter signed by the spokesperson for the State Ministry of Education, Nemeka Iguangu. The directive, according to Iguangu, is in line with one of the recommendations of the committee set up by the state government to investigate the matter following the parading of the fake results which elicited interest and also generated control Controversy and misgivings among the general public. Former Commissioner for Trade and Investment in Abia State, John Okiyi Kalu, has said the former governor of the state, Okeze Ikbazu, did not use bulletproof cars throughout his eight years as governor, despite the insecurity challenges in the southeast. He said rather, the former governor preferred riding in innocent branded cars, Lexus Jeep and Toyota Sequoia. The former commissioner made the disclosure in his 13-point response to a previous article written by the former head of Alex Otis Transition Committee, Christian Uche, where the priest said Otis Transition Committee members did not receive cooperation from the Ikpazu team. John Okiyikalu noted that Ikpazu was prudent with the management of Abia State resources, which according to him made the former governor opt for less expensive cars, even in the face of a risky security environment in the southeast. That's all from the News Machine Studios at Hot FM Oweri. Back to our studios in Lagos. I am Ife Yungwa Nwana. You are listening to the News Machine reaching you from our stations in Lagos, Abuja and Oweri. 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. Monday to Friday. Let's hear what correspondent Nessasani has for us on Voices in the News. Mayor of Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria, Olwell Ehunda, expressed loyalty to ex-Gafna Nyesem Wike. In fact, to some of us, working with you was like a graduate program in the university. Because... It was like learning so many things. And I can assure you that I have learned a lot from you. 
So many things we learn from you. We are glad and happy that we worked with someone like you. Your Excellency, we want to assure you that we are totally with you and that our governor, His Excellency, Siminalaye Fubara, GSSROS, the governor of River State, that we're going to give him the same 100 support, 100% 100 support that we give to you. That at any point in time we are called upon as council chairman, always count on us and also count on our loyalty and our support. Also remember you can listen to episodes of the news machine and see videos of more news stories online at hotfm.ng. And that's all we have for you on today's edition of the news machine. Thank you for listening and to have a lovely day ahead. Good morning.